Life Cycle 201. Today I'd like to tackle a quick instructional video on how to use pop-ups to give instructions to end users. And this is spurred on by a question I got from a subscriber. So I thought it'd be a good fit for this intermediate class. So here I have a form with a header footer and then this button called instructions. And to create this all I did was pull it out size it and make a caption and the real magic here happens on the click event of the button and so the the case you might want to use this is when you want to give some kind of pop-up window that instructs the user to do certain things and you don't want to use up any real estate on the design of the form or you don't want to cause the form to grow and shrink uh, in other words, you you know don't you don't want a subform here that has a bunch of instructions that hides and shows based on a button click. You'd rather just have something hover over the top. And so there's two basic instructions I want to use. First is the app.alert. So on the click event, we can type app.alert. Hello world. And this basically just sends a pop-up to the end user screen and has an OK button on it for them to exit out of. So let's look at it. But there's a problem. At the top it says warning JavaScript window which you cannot get rid of. That's just part of it and it has this ugly red X by it. Not the best way to give instructions. So we have one more option we can use and that is the message box and message box is called from the xfa.host.messageBox function and so I've talked about dot notation here before but xfa is the base host is the actual software you're using in this case it would be Adobe Acrobat and then message box comes up here in this list of things you can do and notice if you're using the dot notation when you highlight message box without selecting it you get this instruction set down here of how to use it I'm gonna copy and just paste that down here I'm gonna clear off this upper part and make this a comment and then expand this window so you can see what I'm doing so basically, and I, we don't really need that part. This gives you a bit of instruction on how to use the message box function. Uh, this right here is a basic syntax statement, and then these are the parameters that are required or optional, and it tells you how to create certain certain logos and symbols. Uh, I, I, they say icon. How to make the title appear. And so we can make a message box say any number of things. In this case, this is going to be parameter one, the message to display. Parameter two is the title to appear in the dialogue's title window. And so we're just going to put a comma and put hello world up there. and then parameter three which icon do you want the error icon which is the default if you put nothing or you put zero one is warning two is question three is status I'm gonna put three there and then what kind of buttons do you want in the fourth parameter just an OK button that's default OK cancel yes no yes no cancel and I'm gonna just gonna do an OK button because all it is is instructions and I don't have to put that zero there it's by default but I'm going to anyway alright and so this is very helpful when you're trying to figure out how do I customize all this to uh, to make this work for me and remember I got to that by going xfa.host and then looking for message box but not selecting it and then looking underneath here for the JavaScript glossary of that object and function okay and so now since I've commented that out, that won't this part that's commented won't affect my script at all. So let's save this now. 
and rerun it. All right, we still get the, the warning JavaScript window. Again, you can't get world, w rid of that, but we at least got rid of the red X, and then we can put a lot of instructions in here, and then there's our title, Hello World, at the top with the OK button. So one more thing I'd like to show, and that is if you want to, uh, in your message, have a carriage return and a, lot, a long narrative. Uh, in JavaScript, the carriage return function has to be escaped. So you may want to put some extra lines in here, and the way you do that is you use the escaped characters in and R. So this is a special character, this backward slash, and JavaScript counts it as a carriage return and new line. And so then we can put in step one. Slash in slash R. Something like that. And now we have a longer hello world box, instruction box, with step one, step two. And we could keep typing all day long using those escape characters. Okay, hope this helps. Have fun with it. Use use pop-up box sparingly. Uh, you don't want to overuse them because it can get annoying for the end user. But it can be helpful in making a robust form that has some instructions that don't fool around with all your design of your form. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.